Yeah, he's saying go, 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 go. Shop channel. I am John I'm here with Jeremy doing a very special unboxing. You know why? Because that's what we do. It is something big. This is the ultimate Tony Rice guitar clone shootout. Of the things that uh, when I finally saw the picture that I was most impressed with, this sunburst. This looks original. It looks right. Hope you guys enjoy it. This is Alan Bybee in Grass Town. Uh, my name is Alec Beshin. I took that idea, kind of built on it layer by layer. It kind of sounded like and reminded me of some of my influences, so I called the song Borrowed. Hey guys, it is New Guitar Thursday. Glad to be with you on Thursday. It has been a weird day today. Welcome back, it's Takeover Tuesday. I'm so happy to have you back here at the acoustic shop. Mask on! Hi guys, <laughs> how you doing? It's John here at the Acoustic Shop. It is New Guitar Thursday, because it's Thursday, and we have some new guitars. And we even have some new mandolins maybe coming, and we have accessories, we have all kinds of stuff here that has made its way into the shop this week. We're really excited about it. First of all, I wanna say hi, and thank you all for joining us. It, it has been great, uh, it's been a great day. We actually did some filming today with Marcel from Lessons with Marcel. Cool, cool uh, guy, talked about some flat picking things. We talked about uh, guitars, accessories, all kinds of cool stuff. That was a fun day. Then we started doing reviews. We just finished the review of the Doyle Lawson mandolin, which is already sold from Gibson. That was a good time. Um, so we just finished that up. Um, and then, you know, we're just kind of hanging out now. Uh, lots of great things that have come in. Again, uh, Hinkley is over here right now, monitoring everything, checking everything out. So if you got any comments or questions, make sure to put those in there. If you got any questions or things that you'd like to see, uh, I'd love to hear from y'all. So let's do that. And uh, we'll walk around the store today and see what's all here. I know we have two Atkins. I'm gonna go through those. Uh, the uh, Elliott Capos are in. Lots of great stuff has made its way into the shop. Um, here's a guitar that we didn't get to spend much time on uh, a couple of weeks ago it arrived, but I'm gonna call it new guitar because I haven't got to play it enough. We did a video with this last week with Aaron. This is the Bourgeois Championship model. This was uh, a guitar that I worked with Dana and the team while we were up there, uh, which was awesome. I went up to, uh, uh, where is it in Maine? I can't remember, Lewiston, Maine, that's where it is. And uh, we started working on tops, talked about their voicing and, and then came up with some ideas. This is the championship. The championship is a sinker mahogany back in sides, which we selected. It's kind of a little funny. If you look at the photos on our website, you'll see it all doesn't quite look like this because he flipped it over. We did an original uh, tracing and then, uh, I don't know, the team or Dana, somebody decided to flip it so it's actually the opposite direction. But still the same piece. Tortoise bound with a really cool purfling line. Uh, this, you guys know how much I love uh, the purfling lines. Uh, this one has that same one that we've done on the Thompsons, uh, which has the line that goes all the way up through the peg head. And this one's actually bound with purfling, I think. Isn't that a binding? No, I guess it's not. It's just an overlay. Um, but it has that purfling line going through. Looks like Madagascar or Brazilian uh, on that. But here's where this one got a little bit different. This was my custom edition of the championship in that 
we double scallop the braces on this one. So this one does have banjo killer bracing. It also has a slot through saddle and it has hide glue addy bracing. Um, so this is a killer guitar. <laughs> Somebody's been playing a lot. The strings are already dead. Super resonant, has all that stuff that you'd expect out of the Sinker Mahogany and a Bourgeois guitar all in one. Waverly tuners, I love the 30 style Waverly's. And again, we went traditional with the slot through saddle. Uh, we figure if we're going to do a Sinker Mahogany championship banjo killer, let's go all the way. So we did, and uh, that's how it turned out. Super special guitar. I'm really proud of this one. Sounds fantastic. And again, available. It will be available with. Uh, Fresh strings too, which is, uh, I'm pretty excited about that. So we did get in another Touchstone OM. Uh, so we have a couple of those on the Touchstone Vintage, sorry, OM. Uh, those are now available on the website. So we have both Dreads and OMs available back in stock right now. If you have not played one of the uh, Touchstone uh, Vintage OMs or the Dreads, they're fantastic. I definitely recommend those and they are at a great price point as well. Gibson mandolins made their way back in and also have been making their way back out. We got in a few more of the uh, Acoustic Shop exclusive versions of the F9. I think, oh, this one's one of them. Look at that, 3D back right there. Um, so we've got a few of those in right now. best mineral right there for you anyway f9s are back in stock we had a bunch of others including a custom shop f5g and some other uh a doyle lawson model it's already gone but look at this i played this last night i love this we got two standard f5gs by the way news is out so i'm going to go ahead and tell you if you are interested in a gibson mandolin you all know that the orders were shut down last year we couldn't order any new ones at all um, so everything that we keep seeing coming in here is stuff that we've had on order for close to two years and slowly working its way through the shop. All of those mandolins are coming in. I just got a call. I think that there's another one on its way uh, of one of the last batches of this. Here's what's happening. They reopened orders, but there's only two models available coming for 2023. We've got some of those on order, actually quite a few of them on order. But if you're looking for current models that are here, uh, right now, these are the end of them. As they arrive, this will be the last. So this is the end, I believe, of our F5Gs uh, that will be available. And look at this one. This is just a stunning. I love this mandolin. Um, and they will no longer, there's an F5G that will be available next year. It will not be like this, and it will be at a higher price point. Um, but they are... are So there you go. The ones that we have in stock, this is it. If you're looking for an F, once these are gone, we can't order any others. Um, there are a couple more F7s or F9s that are coming uh, and a couple other mandolins that I know for sure are making their way out here. But once we're done with our orders, that's the end. Yes, Hinkley, what so can I asks, answer? How does the Eastman E10D compare to the D18 Golden Era? They're looking to get a good mahogany dread, but not break the bank. Okay, somebody's asking about the comparison of an E10D to an e, uh, or a D18 Golden Era. We've done this video. Tons of people have done this video. Jeremy owns a D18 Golden Era that I've played quite often, and I own an E10D. Spec-wise, almost identical, very, very similar guitars. I will tell you, my personal E10D, which I've had for, I don't know, seven, eight years now, nine, nine years, um, I, I hate to say this, and you Martin people out there are gonna hate me, I will, I will 
absolutely stack my E10D up against anybody's Golden Era, and I will almost bet it will come out on top. It is a fantastic guitar. Fa uh, great. I have an E10D TC that I also love, the Thermo Cureds. Um, so definitely a comparable guitar, if not, uh, you know, it, well, it's definitely comparable. I would say if you're not wanting to break the budget, like uh, that comment said, that is definitely a guitar I would try out because I think you will be surprised at how much guitar you're going to get for that price point. Uh, the E10D staple of the uh, uh, Eastman lineup. And again, some changes coming up this year. If you're looking for standard E10Ds or E1020s, Ds, OMs, whatever it happens to be, uh, later on it's a rolling change so they're going to slowly be phasing this out but officially no longer on the order list are standard models of those guitars so what we have on order is the end of those they will now all be tc uh by the end of the year uh at least so it may be it'll be probably sooner than that so if you don't want a tc version and you want the slightly less expensive standard natural tops you need to start grabbing those up because that has officially been discontinued into the lineup uh, out there. So anyway, do have a Bourgeois uh, M5A in stock. Um, that is great. I have a few of the F9s uh, in our custom shop variant. I don't think we have any of the standard models left right now. So that's a wide nut, radius fretboard, banjo frets. Sound fantastic. Definitely all the upgrades you would want in that level. Uh, here's a cool guitar that I just got in in consignment. This is a National Style O, uh, or Style Zero, sorry. Um, this is 1933 Style Zero uh, National. Now there's been a couple things that have been done to it, but overall it's pretty darn nice. So if you're looking for one of those, we get vintage pieces in quite often, usually don't stick around very long. Um, there is a cool 1971 D28, there was. I wonder if that sold today. It may have. Uh, it was in here. So I know there was somebody that was making an offer on that. So I hope it did. Uh, that would be great. So this is a cool guitar. I, we didn't talk about this one because it sold. And then we had some issues. We were going to ship this to France and uh, didn't actually get to do so because of some CITES paperwork and shipping overseas. But this is a 1960, 70, 70, 1970, 0021. So at 70, it's no longer Brazilian, but the 21 was a uh, kind of cool guitar. It was more pointed like an 18 with the tortoise or black binding, in this case, black, um, with rosewood uh, sides and back. So, uh, you know, has that binding look of an 18 style, but with rosewood. And uh, that's pretty cool. So a 00, 1970. Um, this is a really cool guitar as well. So also another cool vintage piece to kind of put into your list of great things. All right, let's start talking about Atkin and some of the banjos that we got in here. We got in uh, from our friends in England, the OM37. Was that right? It's an OM37, that's right. Um, this is in, again, the vintage finish. This is going to be your OM scale with an inch and three quarter uh, nut width, uh, a uh, thermo cured Sika spruce top, rosewood sides and back. Um, so this is kind of unique, normally not done in the inch and three quarter widths, but this one is, we ordered it that way because it just seems to be the more popular style right now for most people looking for inch and three quarters over the 11 sixteenths in these. Uh, Fantastic guitar. This is the first time I got to play it. So there you go. Atkin OM37 just hit the website. Um, fantastic guitar right in here. Matching it, we got in a standard D37, also in uh, the inch and three quarter nut width. And I'll pull that one out as well for y'all. Somebody real quick really wants to egg on the new boucher. 
The new Boucher. So the SG40 or 52? All right, we can do that. All right, so this is the D37. Played this on the show yesterday. Again, a big, booming, monstrous sound, as all the Atkins tend to be. Uh, for me, personally, the only thing I would say is, and we can do this before it ships out of here, medium strings. Um, I tend to overplay this one a little bit, but because I want to just get it to growl. Uh, great sounding guitar, D37. All right, we're going to talk about the SG52 B -M -B -I -M -V. All right, we can do that. He's going to head to it before I even get there. This is kind of a special guitar and one done that I had not originally ordered, but they kind of wanted to uh, show it off. And they said, what better place than the acoustic shop? So this is a Studio Goose. The difference between a Studio Goose and a Bluegrass Goose is one slightly smaller sound hole. I think it's standard sized. It is braced and voiced more for light gauge setup. So this has a light gauge setup on it. This does have the inch and three quarter nut width. A much more modern profile than that uh, Atkin we did. But this has the vintage pack. That's that last V. So it gets a square peg head, thermo cured Addy top. It is an M for master grade. So it has the inlay here, which, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have a B. Uh, it does just a master grade top. And then intimate pack, meaning that it has a pickup, a K and K pickup in it. And then the burst pack all in one. Yes, Hinkley. So all the guitar manufacturers out there, why Atkin? How did you come across Atkin? We can cover that. Atkin, why Atkin? Uh, Atkin has been cool. I've been talking to this guy and a friend of mine who had been checking out his guitars. I saw a couple of the white rice models. I thought they were great. But then I got to know a friend of his uh, really, really well, who actually is tied in with the Eastman Company. Then I met Alistair Atkin in uh, California at the NAMM show. We looked at the guitars. The more I kept paying attention, the more I wanted to do it. The cool thing about Atkin guitars is, one, super cool vintage vibe, um, great quality build. Um, it's coming out of England, so it's not a Chinese build, but yet prices are uh, affordable for the boutique world definitely probably capturing more of a vintage vibe and sound and i think it's part of that european connection europeans love vintage uh, american music it seems to be uh you know as much or more than some of us do especially these guitars that are classic feel and they kind of get that feel and vibe now there's some modern technique stuff in there such as the bolt-on neck uh and a few things that he's done in touches but the finish and all that stuff trying to really capture that vintage sound so there's why we got into atkin great guy great builder um and we just love we just really do love uh, acoustic instruments to the point where we're just always looking for uh more cool ideas and cool people to work with and atkin has definitely been one of those to to, to do so with so when i see something i absolutely love that's when it usually makes its way into the shop so and that goes with this too boucher this is that b-i-m b-i-m-v um, great guitar Fantastic. I think we have this strung with mediums right now for the demos that we were going to do, but it is uh, meant to be to set up for uh, lights, obviously can take mediums, but fantastic guitar right here. Yes, Hinkley. 
A couple other things. She keeps coming in like Somebody she's ready. Asking, um, how would you say that the Martin HD28 compares to the D37, I believe is what they were talking about? HD28 to a D37 or a D35 maybe? They said HD28 to the... Uh, oh! Atkins. Hey, there you go, uh, to the D37 Atkin. All right, how does the Martin HD28 compare to the D37 Atkin? There's a lot of upgrades from a standard Martin uh, D28 that is happening, or HD28 right there. One, it is a super thin vintage version of the nitrocellulose lacquer. Two, it is a thermo-cured Sika spruce top, uh, where the uh, HD28 is just a standard one normally, unless you do the VTS. Uh, so that's an add-on. Um, it does have the inch and three quarters, so those are a wash now with the modern HD28 spec. It depends on what year HD28, by the way, that you get. This has forward shifted bracing to be more like the pre-war standard where I think a standard HD28, uh, unless it's an issue, has uh, the backward shifted uh, X brace. So there's another major change. Different finish, different style build. This is really meant to capture more of a pre-war style D28, HD28 than uh, what uh, a standard HD28 mark would be. So good question. Appreciate that. Thank you. What is the real story behind thermocure tops? So somebody's asking, does it benefit the manufacturer yeah, to use to allow them to use younger wood, or is it truly an yeah. attempt to create vintage tops? I have seen this thread kind of blowing up on the Eastman forum right now about thermocured. What is the reason behind it? What is it? The so. It is not green wood that people are using on this. There's a thread going on, I saw it recently, is uh, our manufacturers just using thermo curing to take green wood and stuff that's not good enough uh, to get it ready. No, they are not doing that at all. Um, the real reason torification became an issue or thermo curing became an issue, it does something completely unique to the guitar. They're taking these instruments, they're baking them in a vacuum sealed, high temperature kiln, and what they're doing is baking out all the impurities. It actually collapses the cell wall of those guitars and it does exactly what 25 or 30 years of drying will do. No kiln, no uh, kiln drying uh, woods or even 10 year old, five year old woods, three year old woods, whatever it is they're using to build guitars are going to be able to do that. Now, a secondary thing that has happened because of the shorter supply of this, they have been able to take woods that haven't been sitting out and air dried for quite as long, not green, but uh, definitely these are still kiln dried, normal woods, but that aging process that normally goes into, into uh, guitar building has been able to be sped up by using thermal cured with some manufacturers, and that's where the advantage has been kind of coming in. So yes, it does absolutely change the tone. This dries out a guitar more so than any uh, thing out there, and then lately there's been some like advantages for some of the manufacturers to kind of get a jump start on uh, the, the build process, which actually has been beneficial, but way before that, everybody was into this because it does give you a more vintage-like sound and feel to these guitars. Adkin Hearing Bone versus Martin D28 price comparison. I don't know where the March D HD28 is right now. I want to say that guitar is in the mid four. I'm going to say they're going to be very comparable uh, price wise. I'm not positive on that. I will have to check on that. I think we have officially got those guitars online, so we should be able to get a price on those, correct? If somebody can look it up for me, that'd be great. I think those are online right now, both of the Atkins. Um, I don't know what HD28 is specking at right now. We are not a, a Martin dealer. Um, here's what I will tell you uh, without risking to be uh, anything blasphemous. You will not be disappointed in that Atkin. It is built to be more like a pre-war open style version of the HD28, where HD28 is a fantastic guitar. This is a boutique level guitar. We're now talking about another step up above from a standard uh, guitar line, whether it be Martin, Taylor, or whoever else. What strings and gauge are on the Bourgeois Championship tread? What strings uh, are on there? Now, standard out of the factory, I do believe it is a XT medium, so uh, EJ17 uh, on there. I think we'll be putting a set of XSs on that now. Like I said, they're a little bit dead right now. Um, so we'll be putting the coated XSs on that particular one. 
uh, very shortly. So uh, it's a definitely a medium gauge setup. It's a championship flat picking monster cannon mahogany guitar. That's what that guitar is designed to be. So there you go. That's uh, string gauges for that. All right, let's talk about other things that came in. One thing that's on its way and I'm surprised hasn't arrived yet. We have a shipment of mandolins from Eastman that is coming. There's probably about 25 mandolins that I saw on that list. A couple of guitar things as well. You guys saw on Tuesday, the PCH2s are gonna be available very shortly, which is the new uh, reintroduction of that. I'm pretty excited about those coming out. We have a couple of other surprise guitars that are coming very, very shortly. Uh, we have the black top cedars uh, that are in from Eastman right now, the E2s. Uh, right now with the um, tortoise pickguards, somebody asked on one of our videos whether or not they had the black pickguards. The black pickguards are on their way, so we will be seeing those hopefully very soon. we got to shoot video content for those, uh, so be looking for those. All right, banjos. Got in some new gold tone banjos last week. We talked with Aaron. We shot video. Um, we got in an OB3, which is the twanger from gold tone. This is a great banjo. This is styled after the, the banger, uh, which was J.D. Crow's banjo, uh, RB75 style. So this is a mahogany resonator, mahogany neck uh, in that standard uh, inlay. Snuffy Smith bridge. It does say master tone on these now. Again, another great banjo in the RB3 style. So this one, I'll give you a quick little run of this so you can hear some noise. And uh, and that's exactly what it'll end up being. It's getting there's lots of good questions out there today, so I'm I'm pretty excited about this. And then we'll talk about what's left of the. extent right there the ob3 uh, i believe this just also went online we haven't got it tagged yet actually we do have tags on it 17.99 with hard shell case um another great banjo got in another super cool banjo and i, I know there's argument as to how long this is going to say we got, may or may not have a staff member who's pretty interested in this banjo so said something pretty interesting. yes they said it's interesting that so here's what happened with the Master Tone trademark. Somebody's asking about how did Master Tone be able to be marked again. Gibson let their uh, patent expire, their trademark expire. And for some reason, I don't know why, uh, but uh, Gold Tone saw this as an opportunity and bought the trademark. So uh, yeah, I guess Gibson, you snooze, you lose, I guess. I don't know what's the way, best way uh, to describe that, but that is uh, actual fact. Um, it was a, a Gibson trademark, uh, and then they just did not uh, renew it, and it was, became available. I mean, I, it makes sense. I would do that. All right, here's another one that we reordered, a little bit different. Uh, this is the Bela Fleck uh, Bluegrass Heart Banjo. Now, this time, no heart inlays. So in the traditional uh, RB75, uh, RB3, sorry, uh, in the Flying Eagle pattern, now this has all the same features as that other one, except we did no hearts. We did um, a brass buttons on the Ricard tuners. Uh, and we have that uh, radius fretboard. Same exact specs as the earlier one. Oh, and I also did the dark uh, walnut armrest instead of the black ebony. Catch you later, Corey. Have a good one now. Presto style tailpiece. This banjo sounds great. Aaron was playing this on the show last week. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, another great sounding banjo. Uh, tends to be a, tends to be a little bit brighter than the last one we had, but I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's got a lot of punch. Comes in the super cool case uh, and a uh, also the Fleck Tune Tuner. Uh, there you go. So uh, that just came in as well. Should be online, and if you hurry up, you can beat our staff member who's thinking about getting one. Again, snooze you lose. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so there you go. The My Bluegrass Heart Gold Tone. Now, last thing that we got came in this week. There's a lot of things that we got that came in, but one of the big ones that I want to cover because, man, have we gone through a lot of them. It's been Elliot Capos. I'm going to grab a couple of those. Okay. Can you grab me a couple of boxes of the Elliot Capos? Yeah, there's Are two open? right there. All right, here we go. So... We got in a bunch of them. We got in some with abalone dots, uh, customized, but we got in 60 some odd capos. This is one of the McKinney's. Uh, looks like this one is in a 16, so 11 sixteenths. Um, these are fantastic capos. We got in 60, I think, something of, the, of that nature. In the last 24 hours, we have sold over 20 of them, so I don't think they're gonna last very long at all. If you are thinking about getting one, grab one. Now here's the deal. The radiuses are marked on this, like this is a G16E, an Elite with an 11 16th, 16 inch radius. Find the neck width you want. So if it's a G, it's gonna, that's for a guitar. The next number, the 3, 4, or 7, 8, or 16. 16 is for inch and 11 16 3, 4 is an inch and 3 fourths. The uh, 7, 8 is an inch and 7 eighths inch uh, nut, nut width. So depending on what guitar you have, that would be there. Then you get your style. The E is the Elite style. The M is the McKinney. I, Integrity. I, I've got various different ones. Depends on the style of that capo that you would want. And then last one is the radius. Depending on what guitar you got, most Martins are going to be 16 inch radius. The Eastmans are going to be 12 inch radius. Um, the uh, Bourgeois are 14s, so that gives you an in-between because it's a compound radius. Um, whatever you need to get in here. Now here's the trick. If we don't have the radius that you want but the right size and capo style you're looking for, Elliot has agreed to re-radius those for free. So all you have to do, we will put, uh, we'll charge you an extra shipping label um, and we'll put that shipping label in there. We're gonna ship it directly to Elliot from here. They will re-radius it and then ship it directly to you, the customer. So all you have to do is tell the guys uh, on the phone. Again, all you gotta do is call uh, phone number here again, 417-720-1223. Call them, tell them, hey, I love that capo, but I need it re-radiused for my blah, blah, blah guitar. They'll help you find that. Again, we ship it directly to Elliot. They re-radius it, ship it directly to you. So we can get that all done. They've agreed to do that as the way to make all that get done. Again, we're down, like I said, so almost 60 capos we had. We are down 20 of them or more uh, by now. That was this morning we had over 20 of them we sold. 39 left. Well, there you go. We have 39 capos left uh, in 24 hours. <laughs> Not even 24 hours because we we put those online at like 4 o'clock yesterday. So uh, I guess it is 424 now. Um, so there you go. Those are available. Uh, any other questions we got, Hinkley? Uh, no questions. No more. Tone, tone guards. All right. Tone guards came back in, including the Dreadnought ones. Um, this is one of my favorite accessories. We sold out of these last time. Um, Dramatic difference in volume uh, and tone, especially when standing and playing. This goes on the back of a dreadnought size. It will fit a grand auditorium, we found, correct? Ooh, it so it will fit on a grand auditorium. I want to double check myself, but somebody told me it would, and it made sense that it would. Um, you filmed it? Yeah, see? Yeah. So it will fit on a grand auditorium, and it will fit on a dreadnought. So look at that. Works pretty good. Um, so you can use it on a Grand Auditorium or Dreadnought. It will not fit on an OM. So somebody did ask about that. That said, dramatic difference. We got a video coming out very shortly. Uh, Hinkley was telling me of us comparing a guitar without and a guitar with. You can hear it. You can hear it? You can hear it on the video? Because I know personally you can hear it. I use these, especially if I'm in any kind of jam session or things where I want as much acoustic volume as possible. This is my uh, deal. So grab these up. It looks like we have four of them in stock right now. Um, you can grab those up as they're available. So, oh, uh, used D35 came in. This one had a couple of changes. It has a pinless bridge in it right now. So that's a 73, is that right? 
71. Did we sell the 70 today? The 71 D28 did sell. Did sell. That's what I thought. It was gone. So the 71 D28 is gone. The 71 D35 is still here. So uh, have that available. Check it out. And that's my wife telling me, come home already. So, no, I'm just kidding. Um, it is her, though. Yeah. Sorry, honey. I didn't, I didn't answer. Um, I hope you had fun. I've had a great time. Uh, we're getting ready for the big trip. We're going to Bend, Oregon next week and going to be seeing uh, Thompson and Bedell and Breedlove and Weber Mandolins and, yes, Hinkley. Well, Tom, do I fit on a Martin Super D? I don't think it would fit on a Super D Dreadnought. I doubt it will. A Tone Guard fit on there. My guess is it won't. I mean, you could probably stretch out those prongs a little bit, but we don't have anything that would match it. The price on this, yeah. the 71 D35, $2,300 is what he's asking. It's a consignment in here. So $2,300 will get you that guitar shipped to you. No tax, by the way. If you're out of state, we don't have to charge you tax. So that's even better. So check that out. Uh, you can see all those uh, prices and things on our website, theacousticshop.com. Most everything I talked to you about today will be on there. There's still so much showing up. I'm pretty excited about the Cotillo inventory uh, that is coming in. And again, uh, thanks to our staff who keeps on keeping everything clicking. I've been over next door all day today uh, trying to get things you know, filmed and all that, and, and they're still just rocking. So again, kudos to all them. And uh, yeah, thank you all for being with me for New Guitar Thursday. I'm going to go out in the rain. I'm going to go get my truck. Uh, the dealership said it was done, and they didn't do anything to it but it's ready to be picked up. So that's always nice. Uh, hey, by the way, you can pick up your truck. We didn't do anything. So anyway, all right. Uh, <laughs> I know everybody cares. <laughs> I just want to share. Anyway, thank you all so much. Thanks for being with me on New Guitar Thursday. We will see you next week. Adios. Sayonara. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>